What does it take to stop being needy in a relationship with a man? It takes tools over thought, mindfulness over matter, and it certainly takes the mechanics of men practices that we talk about on this podcast. And that's what we get into in this episode with Amara. Amara has what she considers to be crippling neediness that was programmed in her by her family of origin and how she is first generation American and how it is more of a cultural norm for a woman to be a bit more of a people pleaser to family members and certainly to a man. So she has a lot of divergent messages coming at her that have rendered her stuck. And in this episode, we talk about tools because no matter her intentions, without those tools and enacting them on a daily basis, she is going to continue to stay stuck. So stay to the end. I wanted to give you this full episode to wrap it up and exactly what you can do. Very tiny steps to take today if you are struggling with this kind of people pleasing, guilt and shame, fear. These are the tools you need to start with. So enjoy this episode with Amara. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love and given me some great guidance and direction. And now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. My guest today is 27-year-old Amara, who is dating 28-year-old Tony. Amara wrote a note to me that thoroughly outlines her struggles and those of so, so many women. So I want to read part of it here so that we can get right into helping her sort this out. Amara writes, Coach Paula, please help. I don't trust myself to keep a man around. In most every relationship I've had, I've pushed the guy away by being too clingy, needy, emotional, messaging him all day, and needing to see him all the time. The solution should seem simple, right? Don't message him. But I'm so afraid if I don't keep myself the center of his life, he will forget about me or not put the effort in to meet my emotional needs. I'm impatient and untrusting of myself to pull off any of the behaviors in the rules. I never related to anyone like that before. Through some toxic relationships with family and past partners, I learned that I had to be fixated on those in my life in case they needed me. This makes me put my own needs last. Because of this, I become resentful of the men I date, and they ultimately feel smothered and need time to themselves. This causes me to explode or cling harder because I feel like I sacrificed so much to make sure I'm always there for him. I learned this behavior through a series of toxic relationships with needy men and my parents who made me feel like I wasn't there for them. I then wouldn't get any connection. Now I'm in a relationship with a healthier man and one that truly makes me happy. I'm so on edge that I can't even truly enjoy it because of my need to please him. I want to know what to tell myself when I feel insecure and want to reach out to Tony when he clearly wants space. How do I stop feeling like a mean or inconsiderate person for not always being available emotionally and physically for a partner? And how do I truly build core self-confidence so I can have a love that lasts versus physical actions, which for me is hard to maintain. Great questions, wonderful note to me, and I welcome you, Amara. Thank you. Thanks for coming on today with this. It's very vulnerable. I like that. You seem to have made a lot of connections for yourself about your past influencing what you're doing now. 
and that's fantastic. Have you been working with somebody on this, like a counselor? Is it just something you have known and experienced in your life and come across and said, this is what I'm doing? I'm definitely an overthinker and I get so emotional that I do a lot of impulsive things and that causes me to have to overthink later. So most of it's from doing my own research or just overthinking my actions in general. Mm -hmm. Have you made connections about how this started for you? Not so much what's going on right now, but how it all began. Yeah, I kind of realized I would be susceptible to some type of toxic pattern when I was very young because I saw that in my parents and just how they treated me. They're very loving and considerate, but I just know that there's a better way of relating, a more positive way of relating. And whenever I would speak to my parents, they would constantly guilt trip me to the point where um, if I ever laid down my own needs, it would become an issue. And I knew that was going to cause a lot of problems later on. And then when I did get into a relationship, my first relationship, I was just very self-sacrificing. And that led to me exploding a lot um, towards the end. And now it's just kind of become a habitual pattern of sacrificing and then exploding in my like adult years. I love that you recognize that it's become a habit and pattern. And I want you to know that hearing you talk and the note that I got from you gives me so much hope for you and knowledge that I hope you take away from this that you are a lot closer than you think to releasing yourself from this pattern. I hope so. I feel like for me, although I know what the right thing should be, getting from point A to point B feels like it's just not possible for me. And I know that's in my own head because there are other things I've overcome. I used to be really shy and now I'm not anymore, but I never thought like I would ever gain confidence. Um, so same with this. I know that it's just a journey. I just don't know how to kind of get there or start or kind of handle some of the more intense feelings that come up of guilt when I do start laying boundaries for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. You need some tools and some things to actually do when it's occurring. That's going to take some practice and you won't get it right every time. But like you said, with like being shy, you overcame that. You will overcome this as well by taking action when something occurs. Because the thoughts alone aren't really enough. Take me through a typical scenario of when you have been in one of these emotional states, like you say, I get too clingy or needy, or I uh, blow up because my needs aren't being met, or etc. Can you think of a, an example? Yeah, for me, it's definitely a buildup, and it's just a pattern I notice that I just kind of feel stuck in. Um, I think it's because I don't trust myself to create a positive and healthy relationship dynamic where I feel confident in how I affect my partner. I've kind of lost that very quickly when I first started dating, so... I'm kind of stuck in this negative cycle and it's just kind of like how I wake up in the morning. I may not want to message this person, but I still do because I feel so much guilt and dealing with the guilt is much harder than just sending a message. So I do that and then if they have a day off or if they like are maybe available. I keep my schedule available and I know it sounds like so desperate, but I just feel like such a bad person if I don't do that. 
So I do that, and then if they're messaging me and I'm busy, I can't even say I'm doing something else because I'm, I don't know, I'm just like afraid of something. I feel like there's a lot of fears I have, but in that moment I feel afraid. So those are like just some little things I do, and then it just builds up. Occasionally I may do something bigger that would affect my esteem in the relationship, but mostly it's all the little things I do, and then when they they themselves like a reasonable person and I, I'm starting to laugh a little because it's so ridiculous as I say it they're like oh I just need some time to do anything like spend time with friends or family I get so upset and then I start arguing and it's like the most ridiculous thing but I know it's a me problem and I know it's like how I was raised but I can't seem to from the very beginning like give myself that permission to think about myself just because of my past experiences, like, I was really guilted into kind of becoming this way. I wasn't always this way, but it was just reinforced with relationships and family and even friends sometimes, too. So, yeah. Thank you for that. I want to go back a little bit because this kind of ingrained habitual behavior that I'm hearing is feeling like almost a compulsion. In other words, when you say in the morning, I know intellectually, consciously, I don't need to be sending a text or it would even be better for me to wait and get his, but I feel an overwhelming need to send it out of, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what I'm hearing, tell me if I'm on the right track, that's the right thing to do. That's what I should do to show him that he's important to me and that I'm there for him. I don't know. Expound on that. Am I on the right track? Yes. And maybe um, if I explain kind of my past more, it would make sense because it seems so dramatic. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, that's definitely correct. Um, I feel a lot of guilt, even just talking about it, just the idea of hurting someone or their feelings. I've gotten better with friends and family, but in my relationships, it's still such a raw part for me to not hurt someone's feelings. I naturally do enjoy being independent since I was little, but growing up, whenever I would not say goodbye to my mom or when I would just not always be there for my family emotionally, even if they weren't there for me, I was met with so much shame and guilt at a very, very young age. And I do think that's just cultural. So it was just like embedded in me that I wasn't a good person. And in order to be a good person, I have to constantly think about others. But that pattern led me to just kind of become like you said, like compulsive, obsessive, and just resentful because ultimately that's not what I want at all, honestly. I'm not really happy and it's not ever really the guy's fault because in my relationships they definitely have met my needs, but the pattern of relating I had just kind of spoiled it for me. Okay, so I'm hearing some interesting assumptions that you're making because they have been programmed in you to make those assumptions. Like, if I don't do, and you can put an X in there, whatever that X is, for example, say goodbye, reach out, know that I'm pleasing him, or, you know, in this case, your family, whatever, that you are hurting their feelings. Is that true? 100%, yes. Okay. So, yes, this is a very important reframe that you're going to have to make, not even just for you, but for other people in your life. It doesn't mean that your family will not push back on it. And see if this rings true to you. You're saying there's a cultural component here. Is it that you being a girl in the family, that that's part of being female, is making things nice for everyone, being a family person, a team player, and doing what is quote-unquote expected. Is that true? A hundred percent. Yeah, I was told that by my mom 
so many times and even media too kind of reinforces it when I try to find another opinion. There's so much out there too that just tells you you need to be perfect and your actual feelings don't matter. I don't really even know how I feel most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because my perception of what is in the media is actually the opposite of that, is that your feelings are tantamount to the truth and that you should always just give in to your feelings and everyone else should understand your feelings. And if they don't, then they're everything from wrong and evil to maybe bigoted or chauvinistic. Well, I do see that side of media. I think media is really polarized. The more open and Americanized or westernized media, yes, but the media I consume that I relate to uh, in regards to women's self-help that is more traditional is what I try to follow. And for that, it kind of aligns with what I was taught and raised, which is you're the home keeper. Like, you need to keep yourself in check. You need to put everyone's needs above yours religiously um, and emotionally and physically, too. Mm hmm Okay. Are you first generation American? Yes. Wow. That's tough. It's yes. really challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finding your way and navigating two very divergent messages is super hard. Are you able to talk to your mother in a way whereby you can voice any of that and she has any understanding of it? Or no? Um, my mom grew up in a totally different world, and she wanted me to be a part of that world. She didn't see another way. Slowly, she is able to understand how I feel, but I also have to come to her being right. Right now, I don't know what that is. I don't know if I am right, if the partner I chose is right. I don't know if following my feelings, putting my needs first is right for me and my future. So many times I've come to her before and she was open to it. And because I myself am so confused and kind of in this weird state, I've made many mistakes and I think I've lost that trust with her. Right now, I'm at a point where I want to really take responsibility but do it the right way and I know in a few years like she'll be able to respect my decisions more yes I agree with you there's going to be a transition period and this is going to take quite a bit of bravery on your part who in your life understands this and is in your corner so to speak about it my aunt ironically she tells me all the time just to put myself first even though she's also not from this culture and she's definitely in my corner i think she does get frustrated with how simple it should be for me to just have more self value or worth but overall she does support me very much okay and what about tony is he also like first generation or in any way understanding of your culture and what you're going through or is he not a part of it he is not in my culture at all so he's kind of hidden from the family and but he's very, very understanding. He actually encourages me to try to focus on my needs more. But again, that compulsive, obsessive urge is just so hard to get over because it's so deeply ingrained. And yeah. Okay. So I'm hearing a number of things that I think you're going to have to start with. And make no mistake, this is a step-by-step -step process. One thing that will help me is for you to outline a goal for yourself 
it's going to help you enormously too to help me with this goal. For example, I aspire to be, and then you outline what that is. You can say also, I want to have in my life XYZ. I want my family to see me as blah, 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 and I want to feel X. I want you to think about that, even write it down. We're going to go to a break. And when we come back, I want to delve into that. And we are going to talk about the simple steps you start to take to make some changes happen and happen quickly. And we'll do that in a moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 80-20 Wonder Club yet, you need to be, because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 80-20 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, relationship evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman because love, like life is best lived in 80 20. when you do 80 percent of what works with men the 20 percent you don't won't much matter join the 80 20 wonder club by going to the 8020wonder.club don't miss out go now to the 8020wonder.club you and your man will be glad you did okay we're back with amara Did you have a chance, Amara, to put some thoughts together? Yes. Great. Go ahead and give me your thoughts or what you've written out. I aspire to be a woman in Tony's life who is strong, mentally stable, self-assured, and loving. I want to be able to, in my family, give them confidence in me and my future life decisions. And I'm the kind of woman who is healed, secure, understanding, and strong. Wow, fantastic. I love these things. Tell me once, um, I wanted to get this correct. Confidence in me and my future, what? Life decisions. When you put something like that out into the world, you can become it. Do you believe that? Yes. Excellent. Because it's largely going to be your belief that pulls you toward it and through the tough spots that are going to occur because you are in the both enviable and unenviable position of being caught between two divergent cultures. Enviable on the one hand because you have a chance of creating a bridge. Unenviable on the other in that change absolutely comes with discomfort. And you are going to have to steal yourself with all the supports you can, but also with your own inner work, whereby you, from your consciousness, consistently, through repetition, give yourself the messaging you need to have in your subconscious mind to override the incredibly strong programming you have gotten. So here's what I know. That if you have it in you, then you have the strength to pull yourself through it. Because I work with the three modalities I do, which is manifesting, the mechanics of men, and mindset approaches that encompass our self-concept, I feel like I know this like I know my name. Possibly, too, because just having lived life a heck of a lot longer than you have. I don't know that I knew it at your age, or I should say I I know that I didn't know it. So you are going to have to use all of your God-given intellect, consciousness, and consciousness is awareness to 
acquire and utilize every possible means to the end result you are desiring. If I were to say to you, I want you to put yourself 15 years ahead and you are now a married woman, mom of a young girl. Do you want children tomorrow? Yes. Okay. So you can relate to this. Being the mom that you are, do you want your young girl to be in the same position you are in right now? No. Mm -hmm. In order to break that chain, you are going to have to do this work. You've been called upon, so to speak, to do it. Because if not, you'll replicate what you've been programmed with. Now, typically not to the degree because your child or children will not be first generation American, right? They'll be second generation. So it'll be to a little bit of a lesser degree, but still there. So you want to have that higher why, especially because you are someone who has been conditioned to a great degree to make your life about others, right? 100%. Okay. So in life, if we think about it, yes, we have allegiance to our parents, to our siblings, to other family members, but there is no greater calling that we have to step up to than to be someone's parent, correct? Yes. That necessitates being the best we can be, recognizing what's happened to us and not replicating it. This why for you has to be very strong. And if you put it first and foremost, because it is the most important thing that generationally you don't continue this, you will help yourself to get past it. And it's wonderful that you're doing it now and not waiting until you have your children because by then it's so much harder and can lend itself to doing a little bit to them that you want to ameliorate the chance of that, right? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you, what does that feel like when you hear me say it? It makes me emotional because I know that I have to be strong for my future kids and I can envision that woman. Right now, I feel like I'm in the middle of an ocean and I know there's an island somewhere. I just don't know how to get there. Okay, and that's what we're gonna talk about. I like that metaphor. And if you've heard me, you know that I work with manifestation in a way, it doesn't matter your religious leanings because we visualize regardless of any religious leanings and if that metaphor rings true to you I like it because so you can out of your own eyes picture that island and you can make that island everything you need it to be and whatever not to make a funny uh, pun about it but whatever floats your boat about that island you want to put on the island and if you can't really see anything on that island right now you can visualize I'm sure you out on a floaty in the middle of the ocean and on that island is a big sign that says something like you are you are here you've arrived you're healed you are strong mentally stable self-assured and loving because that's what you say you want right yes so even if it's that simple it's a start do you think that Tony wants or needs you to be strong mentally stable self-assured and loving yes is there something that's telling you but my family doesn't want me to be that or do they want you to be that too I know they do and they actually try to encourage it or I should say they try to discourage the mistakes I've made to influence me to make better decisions so I know they want the opposite of what I've been I also know that they don't know themselves how to help me or themselves get there I think you're right and this may be divergent for you but they are not going to be the ones to help you you must be the one to help them yes I realized that this year and that's something I noticed the more I've healed this year the happier my family seems as a whole too mm -hmm. let's talk briefly about the connection you have with them and how much they know about your life you said that Tony is hidden how long have you been with him what's your relationship like and how much or if all is hidden about it everything is hidden it's 
mainly to protect my family and Tony because my family only knows one way of marriage and dating and that doesn't work here. I've tried in the past before to do it my parents' way and I wasn't happy. And I've also tried to force my partners to acclimate to my culture and that didn't work either. So at first I was pressuring Tony a lot to follow how my culture goes about marriage and dating and I did see him caving in but more so out of guilt and I noticed I was doing the same thing that was done to me. So Tony wants to be a part of my family's life from the beginning but he doesn't understand that if that were to happen it would take away from him and him being inspired to do it on his own time, which I know he really does want to do. I know that I myself just put so much pressure on us that gets in the way because of that culture. And our relationship is fairly new. It's been about a year. I feel like, I mean, we're pretty serious. He is waiting till marriage, meaning like for me, because that was my decision. But I still feel unsure about everything, and I wouldn't feel comfortable introducing him until I myself am more self-assured with my own mentality and also until I have more of a formal commitment from him, meaning an engagement ring. And I've told him this already, and he understands it, and he agrees too. Just so my parents don't see me as making a mistake, if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And there's part of me that's really glad to hear that. And the reason why I asked about how much they are involved is because... The position of being first generation American caught between what I'm hearing is the westernized part of our culture and the traditional culture that sounds like your parents have come from. It brings with it, I believe, the necessity of keeping your life more private than you would if you were not in that position. Yes, 100%. I don't like that it's that way but it does have to be that way. Yes, because if you try to merge these two very divergent things, it's likely not going to be very pretty. And you don't want Tony to be in the middle of that. It won't bode well for you to have a good relationship, which it sounds like you have been able to maintain. I also like that you have stood your ground of what it is that you want on several levels. The most salient point here is that he, as a man, will need to make the decision to commit to you fully, to steal himself up for what will need to happen that may be culturally different from what he's used to. It begs the question, do you believe that he truly knows what he's going to run up against should he want to move forward with marrying into your family? Yeah, I've um, tried to scare him away many times in the beginning, and I think that just made him more stubborn. He kind of knows my family from school, like my siblings, but he never knew about me until we met recently. So I have been really open with him and doubting him a lot in the beginning. I just voiced my concerns and told him that these are my expectations, this is what I need, and he says he doesn't care about anyone's opinion besides mine. And all that matters to him is that I trust him. Okay. This likely helped him to fall for you in a very big way. Yeah. Because he had a hurdle to jump. Yeah. I'm afraid of, as I'm dealing with these mental issues, well, I don't want to call them mental issues, but these, like psychological hurdles that I don't want to give in to him in honestly any way because 
I feel bad and I'm afraid with how often I feel guilty throughout the day, I'm going to sacrifice something bigger, which I haven't done yet, but I want to fix mentally the smaller things on the daily basis. That way I can fully just focus on myself and give him the time to feel inspired to make that commitment because that's where I feel our relationship is at now and I know if I can give him that space that everything can flow much smoother and our relationship can be much stronger and one day I can introduce him to my family with confidence but the obstacle is mentally right now getting over these boundary issues that way we can have a more easy and less, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for is, but on edge. I feel like I'm always on edge and he's always on edge because of the way we relate to each other and the way I relate to him. He's very, very, very securely attached and he's very emotionally stable and that makes my issues come out even more, meaning I can see that I'm the problem that leads us to argue unnecessarily, meaning me. Once I can overcome this emotional hurdle, I'm sure everything would be on track. And if you could have a magic wand waved over you, whereby you overcame the emotional hurdle, what do you think would be that fix? What would it take? What would the magic wand have and what would it take? Weirdly, I think it would take some magical entity that would control all my actions and feelings and they'll smack the phone out of my hand when I act ridiculous. Maybe like some giant bear or something. And that bear would give me all the reassurance to snap me out of like my ridiculous behavior. Other than that, I don't know what I can do because I don't have those skills. Love it. Okay, I got it. And I'm going to give you what those skills are and how you acquire them. And we'll do that in a moment. So Amara, I love the metaphor you used about like the giant bear because your consciousness can be that bear. You see, if you are looking outside of yourself for the answer and all of us do this, you're looking in the wrong place. Here's what I mean by that. If I were to send you to the best coach, the best therapist, the best guru in any genre of self-help, who at the end of the day makes the change? I do. Exactly. In other words, that person facilitates change, but you make it. No one can do it for you. And I'm hearing a couple of things that will help you in terms of your mindset about it. There's something there where you are feeling fundamentally flawed in some way because of the actions you take, because you feel compelled to do things. Is that true? Yes. And if we look at it under the lens of other compulsive actions, you can more easily see it. For example, if you were to come to me and say, I'm an alcoholic or I'm a drug addict, the answer would be first and foremost, you have to get off the alcohol or the drugs, right? Yes. But is the alcoholic, the drug addict, the gambler, the shopaholic, whatever it is, is that person fundamentally flawed? I think they are. Mm, yes, you see? And that's what's hurting you because you are internalizing that. And until you disavow yourself of that internalization, you're going to have a much more difficult time changing. Tell me what it is that you think about, I don't know, the alcoholic, the drug addict, the, the compulsive shopper, the compulsive gambler, the porn addict, I don't know, whatever it is. What about them is fundamentally flawed? They don't have the self-will to believe they can get through the day without their compulsion. Okay, so it sounds like at the core, then there is a belief problem. You said the self-will. They don't have the will to believe that they can get through the day without resorting to their crutch. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. So they're fundamentally flawed as a person or did they at some point pick up a drink and that soothed their emotions for the moment and then they kept doing that? I think it depends. 
Tell me more on what? It depends on if they can get over their compulsion. Okay, so you're saying though, because I want to make this distinction, because if you don't, you're going to stay in it. And what you're saying is that that alcoholic or drug addict or whatever the addiction is, that person is fundamentally flawed rather than they were going through something and discovered a coping mechanism. And then they kept using that coping mechanism, which at the start helped them cope, but then became a problem. So do you want to stick with that they are fundamentally flawed? And this is a philosophical, spiritual, intellectual query. That's just a very hard pill to swallow. And I have trouble empathizing with myself. So it's hard not to judge others the same. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But until you get to that, the underlying issue is that you are fundamentally flawed. Well, yeah. So where do we go from there? If we can't move you a little bit and say, I can challenge that assumption. That's a really big pill to swallow. So we're going to have to start there. What I'm hearing is you don't have the forgiveness for yourself and you really don't have it for those other people and that's been put in you somehow. And that's why your feelings of guilt, shame, compulsion are there and the compulsion part is okay with you. It's an out in a way because let's say right now I was talking to someone who was an addict of some sort and they were to tell me well, there's nothing I can do it's it's I'm fundamentally flawed how would you feel about that person you would overhear that conversation and she said to me well I can't give up drinking I'm fundamentally flawed what would you think about her I think that yeah she is using it as an out exactly and so you are giving yourself that out just an, a different topic emotionally unstable uh, acting out unhealed impatient impulsive and as long as you stay with that assumption you're going to do actions tantamount to that addict saying I can't give up drinking I'm fundamentally flawed and at the end of the day in this realm it's a choice it's a choice not saying it's easy to make another one but it is a choice and if you start there telling yourself and I mean we're gonna really chunk this down to the smallest of steps okay we need to take teeny tiny steps each and every day those teeny tiny steps each and every day will get you to the new plateau and then you take other steps would you agree yeah I I agree okay because until you take 100% accountability for this and a vow that you are changing you will feel you don't have agency over this and give yourself the out and you do have agency over it what are you thinking or feeling I didn't realize I was doing that to myself Mm -hmm. most of the time we don't because it's been so deeply ingrained and when there is someone in a family system who feels differently goes against the grain to a greater degree others in the family system kind of band together to double down on the status quo the dogma the ways of being and typically not with bad intention they will give messages of you not being right shaming you into like you said guilting you into all manner of those things putting you in the position that you feel you are in whereby you feel fundamentally flawed see how it works within the system yeah and there is no fundamental flaw it's still making a choice you have the agency to make another choice and you must and you have to start with the tiny steps to do so 
and there is going to be a breakthrough. For example, again, we use the lens of addiction because your behaviors have become so ingrained and they feel so compelling that it is almost like an addiction. Would you say that's fair? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you were, you know, drinking five bottles of wine a day, we wouldn't expect you to tomorrow turn around and not drink it all, right? Yeah. In other words, that can happen and it does happen typically where someone has ruined everything in their life to get to such a down and out place whereby they will check themselves into rehab or something like that. But in your case, because the issues are A, not life-threatening, they are not met with a lot of pushback from anybody else. In other words, when you text Tony because you're feeling like you must, it probably doesn't in the moment hurt anything or have the appearance of hurting anything. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, but it does over time. And you know it's eating away at you. So we have to systematically break the pattern and then you deal with the tiny feelings rather than make it a whole huge turnaround. The way you're going to approach it in order to do that is through a couple of channels. The first is Wondering what I'm going to tell Amara she needs to do to help get her out of the pattern of feeling compelled to reach out to Tony, which she knows will lower his interest over time. In the rest of this episode, I outline the self-concept, manifesting, and a bit about my mechanics of men method that Amara needs to institute and practice so that she frees herself of her compulsion and the self-loathing and guilt that ensues. And because I want you to free yourself so that you feel happy, healthy, and whole, and help the man you desire to sustain his desire for you, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, where you can hear the rest of this episode with Amara and so much more. The 8020 Wonder Club is an exclusive membership-only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you'll get over 175 ad-free episodes categorized by age and relationship status, plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. Unfiltered coaching conversations like this one, with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your romantic life. The 8020 Wonder Club also includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace each and every week. It alone is valued at over $500 and is all yours as a member. Join monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a 6 or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve in your romantic life. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club and join us as that is the only way you'll be able to hear what I tell Amara she needs to do to free herself to start living life as she desires and have the man she desires continually inspired. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have divine right results in your relationship or how to start dating in a way that guides a potential Mr. Right to do right by you. Go now to the 8020 dot That's the 8020wonder.club. You and your love will be glad you did.